I'm Mason Regan. I'm a junior on the team this year. Uh, check out our new website, unchockey.com. We have our team schedule, roster, uh, and we have a team store set up too, and it's for a 501c company, so all donations are tax deductible. Come out and see us play sometime. Hill Newsbeat reports on the local stories in our town. Everything from sushi and BLTs to the makers and volunteers who are investing in making our town a better place to live. You'll find Tar Heel Newsbeat in the streaming channel section of your Roku. News and weather for the untethered. Welcome back to the Orange County Sportsplex. We've got a Wednesday night rivalry between the UNC Tar Heels and the Duke Blue Devils. Chris Lehman back with you. We've got some company in the broadcast booth this night, and it is John Johnson. John, Pleasure welcome to, to the here, broadcast. Chris. Glad to have you with us tonight. Thank you. Looking forward to a good game tonight. Uh, and it should be an interesting one. Always a good game when these two rivals meet up. UNC coming in 4-0-1-1, coming off of a 4-4 tie against the Charlotte 49ers on Saturday. But this is a, a team in Duke that UNC has seen this year and has handled pretty easily. 
Yeah, uh, I think, you know, if they stick with their game plan, get out to a good physical game early that is smart, stay out of the penalty box, uh, really get traffic in front of the net, and get pucks on net early, um, and take advantage of a good power play that has really kept them in games the past two games and helped them rally in the game against Charlotte, I think we're going to see a UNC win tonight. Yeah, and you mentioned the power play, five power play goals over the last two games for the Tar Heels. As you mentioned, helped them uh, get back from that 3 nothing deficit. Three power play goals against Charlotte on Saturday. So that's going to be important. They've also been a team that gets stronger as the game goes on. As you take a look in the third period right now, outscoring opponents 11-5. to five, uh, And that includes a three-goal period for Elon and a compact loss uh, for the Tar Heels. We're ready to get things underway here in the first period. Tar Heels immediately dump it deep. We'll get an icing call early. And Duke gets an offensive zone faceoff. Netminder tonight once again will be Will Douthit as UNC in the Carolina blue moving right to left, Duke in white moving left to right. Off the faceoff, it'll be controlled by the Tar Heels, cleared out to the blue line, slapped right into the breadbasket of Douthit. He'll swallow it up for another faceoff. But UNC, at least off that first attempt, having trouble getting out of the zone, and that wasn't all too organized. It did. The winger's got to come out a little bit faster on the defenseman, take away that shot. He had a pretty good wide-open look at the point there. Unfortunately, Douthit saw it all the way. Duke controls off of the far circle face-off. They'll scrum for it along the boards. Squirts loose, a chance in close, and it's swept across the slot. Nobody there to put it on goal for Duke. They'll battle for it. Along the near boards, UNC comes away with it. Switch to the far side. Moving in, Adamson. He'll put one to the far post. Kicked out in front, but the Tar Heels can't get to it first. The Duke defense clears it out. Quickly down the far wing, tracking it down Daniel Jones. He'll back it, backhand it out into neutral ice, and it'll be dumped deep by Jesse Jacobs. Collected by the Blue Devils. They'll move it back up ice. Cross ice clear, blocked down and neutral ice, and the Blue Devils reset. Well, one thing that UNC does well when they're playing at the top of their game is forecheck right up along the offensive blue line. And you saw a little bit of it there. On the near boards now, Tar Heels in control. They'll move it out, cross ice pass, misses everybody. Now to deflect in on goal and beating out the icing call for the Tar Heels here on the near side was Mason Regan. UNC looking to control, still in the zone but not for long. Felix Jung will get it out, gains the red line and dumps it deep. Quickly outletted Turkovic there to cover for Duke. Knocks it back in to the defensive zone for the Tar Heels. It'll get caught up in the near corner. And UNC will slow things down. Back behind his own net, Noah Friedman. Swept to the middle on a cross ice pass. And it's deflected forward by Beeson. He couldn't control. But it'll go off for a change. UNC not really working cleanly through the neutral zone right now, John. Both teams seem to have a lot of energy, uh, but not really making crisp passes. I'd say Duke is controlling a little more of the tempo at the moment. Nice hit laid there by Josh Carlson for the Tar Heels. That'll knock the puck loose. UNC back the other way, pass through the middle. Jones looking for a stick, didn't find it. And it'll be cleared out into neutral ice. UNC still in control. Backhanded deep by Jones once again. Blue Devil defense collecting behind their own cage to the far corner. Good pressure. From the Tar Heel forecheck, Adamson picks it up in the near corner, looking to the slot. He's dispossessed, and Duke will get it out, skating it down the near wing, and it's dumped in on Douthit. He'll knock it to the far corner, rung around the boards, and up along the near side, cleared into neutral ice again. Pass not getting out cleanly, and UNC will have to play defense again. Jones with a steal in neutral ice, flips it forward, Picked up by the Tar Heels. Moving forward, Friedman stops, shoots, and it's deflected up and into the netting by Ryan Feinberg. And that's the first really solid chance that UNC has gotten, and they'll get an offensive zone faceoff. They did. They had one other good opportunity coming in. They got a nice shot that kicked out towards the center. Uh, they had a man driving, uh, one of the wingers coming in, just weren't able to capitalize on that. I think we're going to see both teams keeping short shifts tonight as both benches are pretty short. Bentland and Friedman on the faceoff. Noah Friedman wins it. It'll be wrapped around the boards behind the net. 
They're pinching UNC defenseman, gets it out in front. Swinging shot on by Friedman, sticked away by Cole Luther, the starting netminder for Duke. UNC starting to set up an attack here in the offensive zone behind the net, Bentland. He'll swing it around the boards where Duke can clear it out. Nice deflection on the centering pass by Jacobs. UNC in control again. Friedman receives it in neutral ice. Scoops one in on the backhand. And the Tar Heels get a change. Four check on for Mason Regan. He'll stall it out behind the Blue Devil net. Up the near sideboards. Cleared to the far side and out. But the four check working well right now for UNC, John. Excellent four check. Uh, the first forward in is really creating a lot of pressure. The second forward's going to seal the wall. Nice job by UNC. Uh, now it'll finally be gotten out far enough for the Blue Devils to get a change. UNC looking to take advantage, but it's thrown through traffic to flex back down, and Regan will control. Looking to the near boards. It'll be taken off the panels and driven deep, stopping in the corner, Beeson. Back to the point. He's got an open man in Matt Richard, who will be forced out of the zone, and UNC retreats. Far side, dumped in. Couple of Tar Heels giving chase as the puck scoots down behind the net. And a penalty coming on the Blue Devils. That was a pretty blatant interference against Mason Regan, who was behind the play, and that was just too easy to call. It was really an unnecessary penalty on the part of Duke. Regan really was not uh, making a concerted effort to pressure the defenseman to the point where he's going to turn over the puck. Really unnecessary on the part of the, the Duke defenseman to take that penalty. Well, we talked about the power play before this game started. They get their first chance here with 15.30 to go in the first period. Still scoreless. A battle of the Blues tonight here in Hillsborough. UNC and Duke. It'll be Kramer to take the face off. Controls it himself. Swings it towards the front of the net, but can't get it on goal. Pinching Jones from the point. He'll control, and the Tar Heels set up the power play. Far corner, Kramer looking to the middle. Just missed the stick of his intended target. And Graham Karen. Karen scored his first goal in last week's game. To the oh, net, and they goal. score. Beautiful centering pass from Friedman. Uh, and that is exactly how Daniel Jones scored against Charlotte a couple of nights ago. He stood there on the back doorstep, wide open. Really? Uh the UNC team likes to run a 1-3-1 power play. That means they have their defensemen high. They have three people working uh, the middle portion of the ice and one person behind the net. Daniel Jones did a nice job of coming in on the far post there, received the pass. Pretty easy goal, really off to a good start for that power play. Uh, not quite five minutes in. One for one on the power play now for the Tar Heels, and they lead it 1-0. Well, we mentioned these two teams have met once before as the third game of the season. And the Tar Heels dispatch the Blue Devils 6-2. Off to a good start once again here. Felix Jong taking it out of the zone for the Blue Devils. He finds Sam Freider cutting into the zone across the slot. Backhand towards goal, but nobody there to deflect it in on Douthit. And the Tar Heels clear. And center ice, Jong. He'll retreat to his own blue line. Pressured by a couple of Tar Heels. Adamson got a piece of it, but couldn't knock it loose. Still feeling Jong. Into the zone, button hooking, looking to the middle for Freighter. It misses him. Turkovich gets a one-timer off, but he misses the net as well. Jong on the far side, pinches to the boards, holds it momentarily, but eventually UNC clears it out. And now a chance on the counter. Moving in, it's Kramer down the near wing, top of the circle. He'll cut to the net, centers it off the skate of Jones, and it'll deflect wide as Luther stayed low and sealed it off. Felix Jong gets it out for Duke. But it'll be stopped up just outside his own blue line. Sam Beeson gets it into the zone. Not a clean entry for the Tar Heels, but they get it deep. And now they'll look to control. Near corner, it's Beeson. He possesses. Out to the point. It's off a skate and out of the zone. Jake Wheeland couldn't handle that bouncing puck. And the Tar Heels have to reset. Deflected into the near corner by Mason Regan. He'll collect behind the cage. Looking out in front, nobody there as Duke... Looks to be back on their heels. Thrown to the net, deflected wide. Sent back out in front, off the side of the goal from Beeson. And the Blue Devils will get it out. Gloved down by Matt Richard in the neutral zone. He'll go cross ice to the near side, into the zone, but not deep. As Turkovich will lift it up and out. Richard again. Off a stick on the far boards to the middle. And a chance maybe for Beeson, but he loses it in his skates. Friedman, far corner. Tight turn, back behind the net. He'll be pestered by Feinberg. Circles back to the point. 
plenty of space. Looking like a power play again for the Tar Heels as Friedman wrist one in on goal. And an easy glove save for Cole Luther, but we can start to see that attack coming to form. The attack's really materializing. The, the, you can see the tempo has really picked up for UNC. Uh, really great job by Friedman there, uh, getting in a good opportunity with Regan screening in front of the net. So another offensive zone faceoff for the Tar Heels. Bentland against Kramer. Knocked back into the near corner. It'll be gloved down. Kramer sealing the boards, but can't keep the puck from getting by, and the Blue Devils break it out. A little bit sloppy through neutral ice, and it's turned over. UNC back in control, gaining the blue line on the far side for the Tar Heels. Zach Nodden, but he can't control, and it's cleared out into neutral ice again. One of the captains for the Tar Heels. Oliveira gets it deep. But again, the Tar Heels can't set up the attack. Moving in, Bentland cuts to the far side. Backhand pass to the middle, and it's intercepted at the defense by UNC. They'll turn it back out, and again, loose and neutral ice. Well, once Duke gets it deep, they've really done a good job of stopping up that UNC breakout. They have. They're, they're doing a nice job with their defense, holding it in at the point and getting some pressure with their forecheck. In the far corner, Tar Heels in control. It's Matt Richard, the defenseman, weaving up the far side through some traffic. He'll gain the red line and get it into the offensive zone. Batted back up ice as Duke controls on the far side. Rink wide pass sent back again as Duke has some space with the Tar Heels on a change. Dumped in, it'll be controlled by Graham Karen, who goes to the near boards. And UNC favoring this side of the ice, trying to move it forward. It's worked well. Now they go across to empty space. Nobody there but Turkovich for Duke. And again, both these teams really a disconnect getting out of the zone on the breakout. But once they do, they're dangerous. Moving in, Friedman top of the slot, and he'll put it straight into the chest protector of Cole Luther, who swallows up the rebound for another faceoff. 11-14 to go in the first period, 1-0 Tar Heels. It's a great drop pass by Adamson there. He's driving the net, pulls the defenseman with him, creates space and opportunity for Friedman to get a good, nice shot off. Well, and one thing that UNC wants to generate tonight, as well as some traffic in front of the net, and you saw a little bit of that there. Breaking out of the zone now for Duke, Will Frown. He'll knock it off the near boards and down. Felix Jean along the UNC blue line. And it'll be knocked up and looked like it caught the netting on the near side out of play. And it'll be a neutral zone faceoff here on the near side. Well, it'll be interesting to see John held this game progresses and we talked a little bit about UNC gets better as the game goes on. We'll see if, if the neutral zone play becomes a little bit cleaner because that's really the one area uh, that's been the biggest issue. You might see it open up, it, both benches being short, you know, players are gonna tire out as the game goes on a little bit. And a chance coming in, backhand there shot, rebound, they score. Great creation there from Mason Regan. Didn't have a passing lane there for Beeson but left it on a rebound. He did. So sometimes you'll come in as a shooter, you know if you can take a low shot onto the far side of the goalie's pad, it's likely to kick out to your teammate. That's exactly what happened there, and it resulted in a nice goal for UNC. Uh, and good work. We've seen once the Tar Heels get into the offensive zone, their forecheck does a pretty good job of keeping it there. Uh, of course, didn't need much of the forecheck there. Broke right in and scored. They'll look to advance right off the faceoff. Tar Heels in control. They'll dump it deep as they green. The red line on the near side boards. Regan lays a hit as they scrum for it. Blue Devils clear it out, sent right back in. UNC will check up and go in on the four check. Near side, sent to the middle. Duke still having trouble connecting that pass out of the zone. UNC in control. Jones picks up the loose puck in the neutral zone. He'll lift a backhander to the near boards. Feinberg there for Duke to force it back forward. He's going to be pressured to retreat by Josh Carlson, who knocks him off the puck, but not before he's able to no knock it down behind the UNC net. Moving forward with speed, cross-ice pass off the stick of Josh Carlson. It ends up behind the Duke net, wrapped around the boards, pinching and saved on the far side point by Karen, swinging around with a wraparound shot, and it sounded like it caught the mask of Luther but he does not give up a rebound. That's pretty good rebound control there from the netminder for that the Blue Devils. Very nice rebound control. He's tight on his post. 
Uh, good opportunity. You're hoping that the puck bounces off and is right there in the, what we call the danger area for somebody to come in and mop up just like in the second goal. Another offensive zone faceoff. Duke wins this one. Turkovich swings it around the boards. A stumbling Karen can't save the zone. And now Kyle Oliveira will drop back to set up another Tar Heel attack. They'll carry it in this time. Friedman to the top of the near circle. Shot partially blocked and then cleared out by Turkovich. This one looks to be an icing call as it ends up all the way down the ice, but it didn't get far enough. So we'll play on. No icing on the weak clearance. Up the far boards, immediately sent back in by Will Frown. And Oliveira again with it for the Tar Heels. Right up the middle, stolen away. Dangerous chance here for the Blue Devils. And it's wristed high. Douthat might have gotten a piece of it with the blocker. But UNC gets a break there. That was a poor decision to send that one up the middle. They did. You know, generally if you're coaching, you want to tell your, you know, when in doubt, don't go up the middle. So, you know, that resulted in a really dangerous turnover. That's a, a tough save for a goalie to make. You really can't play the angle. There's a lot of wide open net for a sniper to pick. Uh, so really good recovery there by Douthat uh, to keep this a 2-0 game. And it did deflect off of Douthat. Offensive zone faceoff for Duke. Forced forward by UNC right off the draw, and they'll break it out. Chance here in transition. Racing in, and the receipt of the pass was not great for Adamson. And UNC, though, still in control. Adamson swipes at it, can't put it on goal. The UNC captain looking to possess. Loose puck picked up by the Tar Heels. It's Jesse Jacobs circling behind. Back to the point. Matt Richards tees up the shot, and it's blocked. Rebound off the blocker of Luther as Kramer had a chance on the near side. Great goaltending so far from the Blue Devils, keeping them in this game. Nice reaction saved by Luther there to get over and block that shot. 8.20 to go in the first period. Duke controlling in the UNC zone. Quickly dispossessed in the near corner. But UNC having trouble once again, breaking it out to the middle of the ice. Pass misses the target, and it'll be picked up by Ryan Feinberg. Feinberg weaves around a defender in Whelan, tees up the slap shot, knocked down by Douthat, and he'll cover for the whistle. So that lost offensive possession that we saw what we're seeing is, you know, the Duke forwards are, are collapsing around what we call the house area. They really should be up, uh, taking time and space away from the UNC defensemen. And as a result, the UNC defensemen are getting opportunities to handle the puck and create good opportunities for the offense. Well, let's see if NC State, or pardon me, if UNC can push out and start to pressure up top a little more. Now, the Blue Devils haven't had too much possession, which, of course, has a lot to do with the UNC forecheck, which will go at it. Right here, near boards, Friedman knocks it loose. Turkovich there to knock it up the boards, but sent right back in by Jones. In tight, Friedman shot, rebound loose, and it's popped over the net by Beeson. Friedman will chase it down in the far corner. Knocked loose out of the scrum. Duke controls to the near boards. Turkovich will track it down. Beaten to it by Beeson. He'll knock it loose. Fighting for it along the near board, still Beeson. Backhanded deep. Great forecheck from the Tar Heels. Continues. Regan putting pressure on behind the net. Cleared up the near boards. A Pinching Jones jumps in too far, and UNC will reset back in their own end from the blue line. Sent to the near side, now to the middle. Friedman throws it off the stick of Turkovic. It'll pop high to the far corner. Now Josh Carlson out into the slot, around a defender. Regan loses it to Oliveira. He'll throw it towards the net, off the stick of Carlson and high. And Duke in control again. Shoveled out on the near side and up into the netting. It looks like Oliveira got a glove to it and knocked it out of play. Well, that's what they looked like, what the official signaled, but it will still be an offensive zone faceoff yes. for UNC. So far, Luther is playing an exceptionally good game. Uh, he's really keeping them in it, made some very nice saves. Oh, and you can tell he's feeling it. Just looked back up at the clock to see how much time left in the first period. Six minutes, 45 seconds as we restart play. 2-0 UNC here in the first. A chance with time to break it out for the Blue Devils. Down the far side goes Sam Bentland. Drops it back for a teammate. Poke loose into the corner. Now centered off the skate of Oliveira. It was loose in the slot. Nobody there for the Blue Devils to put it on net. And that seems to be the biggest issue for Duke right now is they have not been able to 
get much traffic in the slot area. No, they really haven't. You know, the shot uh, total is 13 to three right now in favor of UNC. They're just not able to get into the zone and, and get quality opportunities at the moment. Uh, and again, credit UNC for the way they've been able to stifle Duke coming out of their own zone and through neutral ice. Of course, we've seen the Blue Devils do a pretty good job of defending the neutral zone as well. A chance coming for Duke, wristed wide. Might have caught the blocker of Douthit. And it'll be cleared out by UNC. Down the far wing, thrown on goal by Kramer. And a short rebound covered up by Cole Luther for a faceoff. 541 left in the first. Another nice save by Douthit through the slot area. Uh, that's two of the four shots he's faced have come in through the slot area. And, you know, it can be tough for a goalie when he's not really seeing a lot of shots to react like that and to make consistent saves. So good job. Uh, and now UNC controls off the faceoff. Point shot deflects over the pad of Luther and wide. Regan got a tip to it. And UNC was inches away from a 3 nothing lead. Five and a half to go in the period as Duke gets it deep behind the UNC net. Whelan. Had trouble as the puck hops his stick. And the Blue Devils a chance to control with an offensive possession. Near point. They'll battle for it. And UNC able to clear it out into neutral ice. They'll control through the zone. Into the offensive end. It's Regan forced behind. Backhanded out in front. And Jacobs couldn't get one on goal. A chance to turn it back on a counter for Duke. Forced into the... UNC zone by Freighter, but not much further. And now the Tar Heels will chase it down. Back below the goal line, Regan and Turkovic battle. Squirts to the far corner, Frown comes away with it, and he'll weave up the far side. Looking for open ice to the near side, around Whelan. In comes Frown, and he'll be knocked off the puck in the near corner, well, the, where they will fight for it along the boards. And it'll Jump loose behind the net, bouncing puck set down the ice. It hops a UNC stick, but it'll be weak enough to avoid an icing call. Matt Richards pressure. did a nice job there covering for his defensive partner who had just gotten beat. Came over and really stopped that offensive chance. Here comes Friedman, he scores. High slot wrist shot. Caught the pad of Luther, but he didn't get enough. And with 4.10 left in the period, it's 3-0. UNC, and Friedman has been looking for that shot, John, all period. We've seen him come in down this near left wing and pull that wrist shot from the top of the circle, and he finally found a hole. He did. Nice job burying it. So we're back to center ice. Another faceoff, a 3 nothing lead for UNC. And at this point in the season, game number seven right now, they are outscoring their opponents 9-3 in the first period. That's certainly a recipe for success. That is. You know, it builds confidence with your team. Also takes a little bit of the wind out of the sails of your opponent. Loose puck up high in the offensive zone. UNC controlling. The shot there from Carlson blocked. Back to the point. Wrist shot in traffic. Knocked down. Sent back to the near point. Again thrown towards the goal by Jones. And it skips just wide. Friedman to the far corner. Slapped back across. It'll hop the stick of Jones and get out. So UNC will have to check up from the far side boards. It'll be thrown in. Our UNC looks to set up another four check. Cleared up and out once again by the Duke defense as Jackson Thomas tracks it down for the Tar Heels. Thomas through the middle of the ice. Knocks it off the near boards to the blue line. It'll be backhanded in where Duke controls in the near corner. Good pressure from Beeson. Set up the near boards. Off the side, it'll be lifted into the netting by Patrick Kramer, and the faceoff will come out of the zone for the faceoff. Well, this period's going about as well as you could have hoped for UNC. They've converted on their power play opportunity. They've stayed out of the penalty box, and they're dominating the shot total, and you know, the more you shoot, the more likely you are to score. Right now, the shot total is 16 to four. Uh, I believe it was Wayne Gretzky who said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take in Absolutely UNC. Right. Certainly putting plenty towards the net as well. We've also seen the neutral zone game pick up a bit. They've been able to move quickly through neutral ice, which has created a lot of these scoring chances. And a chance to set up the four check again. And it'll squirt out down the far boards. Rink wide pass, and the Blue Devils are into the offensive zone. 2.40 to go in the period. And a 3-0 lead for the Tar Heels as they've jumped out to a commanding lead early. A scrum along. The near boards will draw a whistle 
And I didn't see a signal. Might have been a hand pass. And there will be a face-off on top of the UNC blue line here. Well, this is the time to buckle down. You've got a lot of momentum if you're the Tar Heels. You don't want to give up a goal here in the last couple of minutes. Blue Devils win the faceoff, and they will lift it deep. UNC behind their own net, controlling to the far corner. Pinched in and saved by the Blue Devils. They'll get a chance out in front, but UNC holds strong defensively. They protected the net well there. Oliveira behind his own cage. Moves it up the near boards as he throws it off the glass. Slapped right back in. Caddy corner to the far side boards. Held by Frown. And he'll swing it towards the net. Deflects on goal. Nice pad save by Will Douthit. 1.55 to go in the period. Moved out by UNC. Clean through the neutral zone with speed. Friedman in and he scores. Beautiful move by Noah Friedman. A pair of goals tonight. That brings his total up to seven goals on the season to lead all scorers for the Tar Heels. Freshman Noah Friedman really did a nice job using his speed, splitting both the defensemen, and really coming in on a nice breakaway opportunity. Great hands, beats the goalie. On a nice simple move, you mentioned the hands, just right. quick move to the to the forehand, and he dumped it back to the near post. So 4-0, 148 to go in the first period. And UNC looking to put this one on cruise control after the first 20 minutes. Ryan Feinberg breaks into the zone for Duke. He'll control all the way around to the near corner. Backhands it back behind the net as the Blue Devils trying to set up their offense. The UNCD doing a great job of breaking that up. Stretch pass to the near boards out of the reach of number 17, Jesse Jacobs. And it'll be an icing call on the Tar Heels. This will be to the right of Will Douthin in the far circle. Felix Young to take it for Duke. Loses it to Regan, who wins it backwards behind the net. Tar Heel defense controlling. A couple of cross ice passes to get it out. Young steals it away. He gets it up the near boards and dumps it down into the corner. Backhanded right back out, and UNC will move through the neutral zone. Into the offensive end. Down the near wing, it's Whelan. Softly to the middle. Blocked initially and sent back in by Regan. Great persistence from Mason Regan. And a pair of late ones for the Tar Heels. And it's 5-0. Great persistence. That play was set up by Whelan, who came into the zone, pulled up. Was really able to take a nice patient shot that got to the net, set up that scoring opportunity. Well, and the touch was perfect to get it there in time for Regan to deflect on goal. And a great effort there from Luther. Got a blocker to the rebound shot from Regan, but couldn't get enough of it to keep it out. And UNC continuing to pile on. 5-0, 58 seconds to go. And the move forward right off the faceoff. At the blue line, it'll be controlled by Nodden. Dropped back to the defense, to the far side, weaving in is Noah Friedman, wrists one on goal, stick to the corner by Luther, back behind, it'll be controlled by UNC, backhanded in front by Nodden, but nobody there to knock the rebound home off the stick of Luther. Dumped up and out by Duke. Jones tracks it down in his own end, deflected through the neutral zone, a great chance here with 30 seconds to go. Thrown on goal, long rebound out from Luther, wristed back over the goal by Friedman. And UNC sets up the attack, slap shot from the near point. Knocked away by Luther again. 15 seconds to go in the period. Far point, it's Jones moving in down the far wing. Backhanded in front, first try didn't go. Gets it to Friedman who fans on the shot on the near post. Five seconds left, it'll be cleared all the way down by Duke and that should finish off the period. And a great first 20 minutes, John. Can't ask for much better than a five goal lead. No, uh, they really turned it on as the game went on. You could see them building more confidence. Really putting on a display on how to score. Scoring on the power play, scoring in sort of a breakaway mode, scoring on wrist or scoring on rebounds. So a uh, good overall performance by UNC that period. Well, both teams heading off the ice for a quick breather. We're going to take a break with them as well. We will be back during the intermission. Patrick Kramer of the UNC Tar Heels will join us in a few minutes. 5 nothing UNC after 20.
I'm Mason Regan. I'm a junior on the team this year. Uh, check out our new website, unchockey.com. We have our team schedule, roster, uh, and we have team store set up too, and it's for a 501c company, so all donations are tax deductible. Come out and see us play sometime. Our Hill Newsbeat reports on the local stories in our town. Everything from sushi and BLTs to the makers and volunteers who are investing in making our town a better place to live. You'll find Tar Heel Newsbeat in the streaming channel section of your Roku. News and weather for the untethered. I'm Mason Regan. I'm a junior on the team this year. Uh, check out our new website, unchockey.com. We have our team schedule, roster, uh, and we have team store set up too, and it's for a 501c company, so all donations are tax deductible. Come out and see us play sometime. Our Hill Newsbeat reports on the local stories in our town. Everything from sushi and BLTs to the makers and volunteers who are investing in making our town a better place to live. You'll find Tar Heel Newsbeat in the streaming channel section of your Roku. News and weather for the untethered. We're back in Hillsboro, North Carolina at the first intermission. UNC and Duke Tar Heels with a commanding 5 0 lead. I'm now joined by Patrick Kame Kramer of the Tar Heels. Patrick, a weeknight game, but a rivalry oh, yeah. game nonetheless. How does it feel to get out to an early lead against the Blue Devils? Oh, it feels really good. We're out here for fall break. Uh, just started, classes are out. We got the fans here. Great rivalry here with Duke. Always get a bigger fan base, you know, just good vibes all around. Good to go. Well, a very good first period for you guys. Okay. Not often that you put up five in the first frame, but right. you guys have a very comfortable lead. How do you continue to do that in the second period? Uh, the way that we continue to do it is just to keep playing how we can. Uh, the biggest thing that hurts us all year is uh, playing uh, penalty kill most of the game. So uh, coming out here, we're showing that we can come at you full strength every line and just roll. All right, Patrick, thanks for taking some time yep. to talk to me real quick. Yeah, I'll let you get back to the locker room. Good luck in the second two periods. Yep. Thank you. That's Patrick Kramer of the Tar Heels. We'll be right back as me and John Johnson step back onto the camera and talk about this first period and get you ready for the second. 5 nothing Tar Heels over the Blue Devils at the break. I'm Mason Regan. I'm a junior on the team this year. Uh, check out our new website, unchockey.com. We have our team schedule, roster, uh, and we have team store set up too, and it's for a 501c company, so all donations are tax deductible. Come out and see us play sometime. Hill Newsbeat reports on the local stories in our town. Everything from sushi and BLTs to the makers and volunteers who are investing in making our town a better place to live. You'll find Tar Heel Newsbeat in the streaming channel section of your Roku. News and weather for the untethered.
Welcome back to the Orange County Sportsplex here in Hillsboro, North Carolina. Chris Lehman joined alongside by my color commentator, John Johnson. Here at the first intermission, a 5-0 lead for the Tar Heels, John. Was a bit of a slow start, though, for UNC. Once they got going, though, what did you see out of them? Well, you know, it was a slow start. I think what really helped them out is they started to use their natural speed. You can tell they're a faster team than Duke, uh, especially guys like Noah Friedman. I mean, really uh, have exceptional burst. A uh, little more crisp on their passes through the neutral zone. You combine that with speed, it puts a lot of pressure on the Duke defenseman and allows you to enter the zone a little more crisply. Uh, they also did a nice job of getting pucks in deep and really working on their forecheck. So when you're working on your forecheck, you want to get your first forward in, making that defenseman turn and have to go react to the puck without being able to see what his team is doing behind him. And then your second forward comes in and tries to anticipate where that defenseman's going to go with the puck. And so we saw some of that, and we saw that create really good scoring opportunities, a lot of second chance opportunities that they were able to capitalize on too. Yeah, we certainly saw plenty of those. One of the other things you mentioned there a little bit was the crisp passes through the neutral zone. That wasn't there early on in the game. What changed that really allowed them to get through neutralized quickly? I think, you know, sometimes there's a feeling out process the first couple of shifts when you, when you haven't seen a team in a little while. And, you know, it, as forwards, you're judging how strong the defensemen are you're facing. You're getting a, just a feel, really getting your skating legs underneath you. And after that first shift or two, you're now, you're now more in a rhythm. And you're going to notice it here with the short bench tonight because coach is forced to rotate two centers. So instead of having three full lines where you're playing with the same guys continually throughout the game, you're rotating wing pairs that are now matching up with different centers. And each center has a different style. So the UNC centers are almost polar opposite. You have a center who's six foot two, and you have another one who's five foot seven. One who's very, very small and fast. The other one who is a bigger, more powerful skater. And so they're going to have different styles of play and sort of work differently through the neutral zone. I know certainly, as you mentioned, the short benches on both sides are going to create some coaching challenges throughout the next couple of periods. What does UNC need to do here to continue that dominance they've had through the first 20 you know, minutes? I think the first thing they need to do is just continue to focus on a team game. Sometimes when you get a large lead, especially early on in a game, your players want to play a little more individualistic of a game, right? Maybe pad their stats a little bit. You want them to focus on a team game because not every game is going to be this easy. And honestly, if you start to change your game, it really allows the other team potential opportunity to get back into it. So continue to stick with what got you here, a good solid team game. And then, you know, the other thing you want to do is just continue to put the pressure, really, really not give the other t uh, team an opportunity to breathe. From a, a coaching perspective, with both benches short, uh, you're going to want very short shifts, uh, and you're going to want to change uh, in a very smart manner because you're now you're on the long sheet of ice, right? You're you're now your your shifts are longer uh, to come on and off the ice because we're now going the opposite direction, and so you want to resist the temptation to hop into one last rush and potentially tire yourself out, and then leave an odd man rush going the other way. Well, the Tar Heels have got off to a great start through the first 20 minutes. 5 nothing lead over the Duke Blue Devils here at Orange County Sportsplex. The team's about ready to take to the ice again, so we'll take a quick break and come back with puck drop for the second period. From the reserves of Topo Organic Distillery in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, comes eight oak whiskey, aged with the heads already removed on eight different chars of American and French oak. Topo's eight oak whiskey, limited reserves at all ABC stores. I'm Mason Regan. I'm a junior on the team this year. Uh, check out our new website, unchockey.com. We have our team schedule, roster, uh, we have team store set up too, and it's for a 501c company, so all donations are tax deductible. I'll see his place sometime. Our Hill Newsbeat reports on the local stories in our town. Everything from sushi and BLTs to the makers and volunteers who are investing in making our town a better place to live. You'll find Tar Hill Newsbeat in the streaming channel section of your Roku. News and weather for the untethered. From the reserves of Topo Organic Distillery in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, comes eight oak whiskey, aged with the heads already removed on eight different chars of American and French oak. Topo's eight oak whiskey, limited reserves at all ABC stores.
fresh 20 minutes up on the clock here at the Orange County Sportsplex. Chris Lehman back alongside John Johnson as the UNC Tar Heels get set for the second period against the Duke Blue Devils. And it was a dominating first period for Duke. They did get a power play goal, John, but just in, in general, they controlled the play. Once they got it deep in the offensive zone, they kept it there, uh, and it shows on the scoreboard. Yeah, that's right. They generated multiple opportunities uh, pretty much every shift. Uh, the shot total speaks for itself, 22 to 5. Uh, they capitalized on their one power play. So about as good of a period of hockey as you're going to see played here at the Sportsplex. Well, both teams at center ice now as we restart play. Again, UNC in the Carolina blue uniforms moving left to right here in the second period. White uniforms for the Duke Blue Devils moving right to left. Tar Heels will control off the opening faceoff. Jake Wheeland at his own blue line, playing catch with his defensive partner, Richard. And it'll be a careless pass up the middle. Looked like Kramer didn't expect the pass to come to him. And UNC dodges a bullet as Richard will take control of the loose puck and get it deep down into the near corner. And it'll be sent back around as Duke looks to control, trying to find a lane out. As we mentioned, that UNC forecheck has been suffocating here early in this game. A chance, though, breaking loose for the Blue Devils. Thrown in off the net, but gloved anyhow by Douthit, and he'll hold on for the faceoff. But that's really kind of only the kinds of chances that we've seen for Duke is those chances on the rush getting out on a break, and Douthit, if he can see it, is going to make the stop. Pretty much after their first shift into the zone uh, at the beginning of the game, Duke has not been able to really create sustained pressure in the zone. They've got a chance here as they win the offensive zone faceoff. Not going to last long, though. Friedman with the steal up at the blue line. He'll race down the near wing, sends it to the middle, thrown on goal by Regan. Rebound loose in the low slot, and it looks like Cole Luther got to it and covered it up. But we might have a penalty there was some conversation down there. It looks like they will stay five on five for now. An offensive zone faceoff for UNC. It'll be one to the far corner by the Blue Devils. Kept in at the point by Oliveira. But only for a short moment. Oliveira pinches, can't save the zone. Now Friedman will be knocked down. Puck comes with him. And UNC controls up to Regan. To the far side, Beeson. He'll streak down the wing. Has plenty of space moving in. Throws it on goal. Stopped by Luther. Rebound poke wide by Regan. And UNC will set up the forecheck as Frown gains control for the Blue Devils. Up the near boards. Can't get it out. Beeson at the blue line. Into the slot. It'll be intercepted and cleared out by the Duke defense. But UNC controlling, and it looks pretty similar to what we saw at the end of the first period, John. Yep, good sustained pressure, uh, really creating opportunities with their speed and capitalizing off of some Duke mistakes. And there you see a bit of physical play. Kyle Oliveira knocks the Blue Devil off the puck. Tar Heels going to get it deep. Chasing it down, Zach Nodden beat to it by Frown of Duke. And they'll scrum along the far boards in the corner. It pokes loose and a chance on goal. And it's knocked wide by Nodden all the way out to the near point. Kept in. By the Tar Heel defense, thrown around behind, centered out in front, still loose in the near, or far circle, pardon me. And the Blue Devils gain control and get it out, but they really haven't been able to possess the puck outside of their own zone. With a long change, a chance here for the Tar Heels. Racing through the middle of the ice, Kramer in on a break, and it's stopped by Luther. The Blue Devil netminder coming up strong once again and keeping this as close as he can. Tar Heels in control. They'll set up an attack, thrown on goal, and it's in the back of the net. Kramer from the far boards, and I think that was just an unexpected shot. Yeah, I just I think you got lucky there. Uh, Luther's been really strong, seeing the puck well all night, and one just snuck past him there. So that'll make it six nothing, just over two and a half minutes in to period number two. Noah Friedman out to take the faceoff. For UNC up against Sam Fentlin. Tar Heels gain control. Matt Richard backpedaling into his own zone. Knocks it behind his own net. It'll be wrapped around the boards where Noah Friedman collects. Lifts it to the middle of the ice. Off a body and it'll deflect to the far boards. Jake Whelan forces it forward. Can't get it into the zone and now a chance for Duke in transition. Weaving through the middle of the ice and a nice job by Richard 
You stall that one out. Still Blue Devils in control. Turkovich looking Richard to did a nice job of playing the body there as the Duke forward tried to toe drag him. And now the Tar Heels get a chance to clear it out. Friedman takes a hit to get the pass out. Looking for Adamson. Must have deflected off a stick. No icing called. And Duke sets up behind their own cage. Good pressure from the UNC forecheck. Friedman throws a hit. Knocks the puck behind the net. But no Tar Heel there to collect. Up the far boards to the point. It's Richard. Left off for Adamson. Throws it towards the net. Misses everybody. And will be collected in the near corner. Still... Duke can't clear it out. 16-15 to go in the second. Around to the far side boards. Frown lifts it out and all the way down. And a spill for the Tar Heels means the loose puck down the ice. Sliding in, Frown tried to get a piece of the clearance, but a heady play by the goaltender doubted to come out. Now a chance for Kramer. Forcing his way down the far wing. Couldn't get it in front. And now Duke can turn it back out. Jong. Has the puck hop his stick on a stretch pass, and UNC will control. But a, a nice, smart play by the goaltender Phenomenal there. Phenomenal play by Douthat. Otherwise, he was facing a 2-on-0. Really bailed out his team there by playing the puck well. And UNC trying to set up again in the offensive zone. Loose puck collected on the far boards by Felix Jong. Jong weaves around Kramer. Throws it on goal. Shouldered away by Douthat. Nice job to stand tall by the netminder for the Tar Heels. Near point slapper. Off the stick of Feinberg is deflected wide in front. And now UNC gets it out of the zone. Down the near wing, Kramer collects a loose puck, throws it on goal. It'll be knocked over the net, off the glass, and I, I'm not sure if that one got out of the zone. No, it'll be a too many men on the ice call. Richard heads to the box. Uh, that's a mental error for the Tar Heels. And this is a chance, if any, uh, you don't often see a six goal lead squandered, but uh, if there's anything that's going to give Duke a chance, John, it's a power play here. That's right, I mean, really Duke has to capitalize here. They really haven't had much going on tonight. Uh, so this is an opportunity for, to build some confidence, get on the board, create some sustained pressure in the zone. So a far circle face off in front of Will Douthat. Five on four opportunity for Duke and the first clearance is out over the Duke bench and out of play so we'll redo this face off. 15.04 to go in the second period. Four seconds do run off the power play there. But we haven't really gotten a, a good look at the penalty kill. Only one other power play on the game. That was for the Tar Heels. Didn't last very long as they scored early. So another face off in front of Douthat. Right in on goal, he'll slide it to the near sideboards. They'll fight for it, Whelan takes a man down with him, and the loose puck will be shoveled up and out of the zone by Josh Carlson. Swept back in by the Blue Devils. They'll hold it in at the near point, down to the corner for Jong, out to the top of the far circle, and the wrist shot goes high and wide off the stick of Frown. He gets it back again on the far point from Jong. Back to Felix Jong, quarterbacking, cross ice pass, into the near circle, back to the point where it'll be saved in by Feinberg and swept in by Frown. Near corner, Duke man goes down as Whelan dumps it up the boards, forced out by Carlson. He'll take it in, shorthanded chance, top of the near circle, blistering slap shot goes high over the net. And now Duke moving forward once again. Into the zone and we've got, wow, looked like a pretty blatant tripping call. UNC catches a break there. And you see behind the play, Freighter was complaining about that one. Tar Heels able to get it out. Duke bringing it back once again. 48 seconds left on the man advantage as Frown circles behind the UNC net. Backhands it back to the near point. Feinberg, slapper, deflected in front by the traffic. To the near corner, Blue Devils still in control. Far point, Feinberg again. Tees it up, goes high. This one rings all the way around. Kept in on the near point. Low shot into the glove of Douthat by Frown. And it'll be another face off here in front of Douthat with 24 seconds to go on the power play. Now they haven't scored, but Duke has gotten some chances. Duke had some nice looks there. Really, you know, they need to focus on getting the puck on net. Both of their, uh, both of their quality looks went high and wide. 
And so you'd like to see that puck uh, maybe potentially rebound off the goalie into the center where you have a better chance to score. Uh, great job by Mason Regan off the faceoff, wins it all the way down the ice. Beeson chasing it down to put the pressure on. But a chance here for Duke as UNC got aggressive with the penalty kill. Nice step at the blue line by the UNC defense. And that'll force an offsides. But a, a great job there. Looks to be Carlson, or pardon me, Karen, who made that yeah. play. Karen did a really nice job. You can sometimes use the blue line as an additional defender if the team doesn't have speed or good control, and that's what he did. Uh, he really stepped right up on the blue line and uh, prevented them from entering the zone cleanly. Well, Duke will get it in as they dump it deep. Near corner, Karen forcing it up the near boards. Regan lifts it all the way out, caught the American flag over the ice. But that stays in play, will continue. Beeson tracks it down, a shorthanded shot from the far circle will be swallowed up by Cole Luther, and the penalty now has expired to Matt Richard for too many men on the ice. And we're back to even strength. So a lot of zone time for Duke there, but a, a pretty good kill from UNC. It's a good kill. I was particularly impressed with uh, Graham Karen there. He did a really nice job throughout that entire shift, disrupting the flow of the Duke power play. Uh, one thing that you and I talked about a little bit before the game is Oliveira tees up a slap shot off the faceoff, blocked in front, uh, was uh, a look at, at the NC State team, who really kind of is the benchmark of the ACCHL and how organized their power play and penalty kill look. And it's been somewhat similar from UNC here tonight. Glove save for Douthit on a weak shot from the near boards. And we'll get a face on. Yeah, both special teams units have been performing well. We knew the power play was going to be strong coming in. Uh, the penalty kill probably could use a little bit of work, but they spent a lot of penalty kill time in that game against uh, Charlotte. So we're seeing some good results here tonight. Off the face-off, they'll fight for it in the near corner. Eventually it pops out in front, settled down by Carlson. He's got speed down the far wing. Wrist one off the blocker of Luther and to the far corner. Kept in on the far point by Friedman. He'll go caddy corner to the near side. And they'll scrum in the near corner. Just over 12 minutes left in the period. Friedman loose in front, wrist one wide. It'll wrap around to the far point where Oliveira throws one towards goal and it's deflected out. And we'll get a face off here, but a chaotic attack there from UNC, and it looked like Duke just couldn't keep up. What you're seeing consistently is the, the Duke forwards are collapsing in around the defense. You'll see that when teams start to feel stress uh, that the scoring opportunities are coming in. The wingers should be up higher, but they instinctively want to come down and do more, and that's just creating more opportunities for UNC because the points are wide open. So 12-11 to go. Offensive zone face off won by the Tar Heels. Far point Rister. Deflected but stopped off the stick of Richard. And a nice job seeing that one for Cole Luther. And you look at, at a 6-0 score and you think, and, you know, that's not great goaltending, but it's been a, a lot of quality goals from uh, the Tar Heels. I, I think Luther has played a surprisingly good game concerning the lack of support he's been getting from his team overall. Under 12 minutes now to go in the second period. One goal here in the second frame for the Tar Heels. Has it at 6-0. Still looking for another as Jacobs backhands it deep. Kramer circling behind the goal. Into the near corner, it'll be wrapped up the boards. Blue Devils take over and get it out into neutral ice. Pinching up to the red line, Richard stalls out the attack. And he'll continue to battle for it. Blue Devils still in control. They get it into the zone. Felix Young looking to the middle, trying to find an open teammate, and it's popped over the goal. That might have been the best opportunity right in front of Douth at point blank range, and they come up empty. Another wrist shot from the near side is blockered up and into the netting. We'll get a face off, but a good look there from Felix Young. Felix Young, uh, he's been skating hard tonight. He's been creating some opportunities just with his legs and his patience. Uh, you know, sometimes when you fall behind like this, you really want to score quick and you're rushing things. And so he did a nice job there of just using some time and space and creating a good quality opportunity for his team. So we'll get a face off in the near circle and the UNCN Friedman to take it for the Tar Heels. Can't win it backwards and Duke controls, but a nice job stepping up by Regan. He'll take the pass at the point, racing in and a quick odd man rush off the pad of Luther. Nobody there to put home the rebound. Not bad control from Luther either as Beeson forces his way out in front. Can't get the shot off. Now Friedman from the far boards. Sent out in front, the rebound sitting there. And the Blue Devil defense clears it out of danger. And now all the way out of the zone. It'll be tracked down by Friedman. But a good odd man rush there for the Tar Heels off that faceoff. 
Uh, and I mentioned a pretty good rebound control from Luther. He had to kick it out in front, but a lot of power to that rebound. It was. It was good rebound control. He took it out of the danger area. But that whole play was set up by Regan really coming out hard, pressuring the point man and causing that turnover. You're not seeing that from the Duke forwards on the faceoffs. It'll be Beeson in control and neutral ice. He'll gain the red line and get it deep. Stopped behind the goal by Luther. And it'll be stolen back behind that net. Friedman slipped out in front, but couldn't slip it home. Frown backhanded up the far boards. Pinched off by Friedman. Dropped back to the point for Karen. His wrist shot blocked right up at the point, and it'll deflect out. Now we've got a whistle. A hand is up, so we do have a penalty coming. It looks to be another one on UNC. And we'll wait to see who is headed to the box. And it's going to be Mason Regan for a cross check. Oh, and that's a penalty you don't want to take. I talked about it with uh, head coach Jeff Volkman after the game against Charlotte. We also heard a little bit from Patrick Kramer about discipline and staying out of the box in the first intermission. And the Tar Heels, with those kind of penalties, that's not, not that kind no, of play. No, you know, against a, a higher caliber, higher talent team or a Duke team on a better night, these are the types of things that can really turn the tide of a game. So, you know, we've had two penalties this period after a very clean first period by UNC. So hopefully, you know, the penalty kill will come out and perform as it did on the first penalty kill. So another chance here for Duke. Well, and actually they'll take them both. I didn't see them putting the Duke men in the box. So it'll be four on four here, which could favor UNC. Plenty of spaces. Carlson breaks into the offensive zone for the Tar Heels. In the corner, and we're going to get another yep. penalty, a hit from behind. That's an easy one, and it will likely be a minor. We did see a major penalty to Matt Gelatly at the end of the first period against Charlotte on Saturday, uh, and this will just go down as a cross-check as we see the signal from the official. But a four-on-three opportunity here for UNC. Uh, same Duke defenseman who took the penalty in the first period. Both of them really not necessary in a four-on-four -four situation. There's plenty of ice. There's no way to take that type of penalty. You're really putting your team at a disadvantage here now uh, with clearly you know, a, a higher skill team at the moment with more speed out on the ice in a four-on-three situation. So 9.58 to go in the second period. Miscommunication off the faceoff lets it squirt out of the zone, and the Tar Heels will retreat but they've got two minutes on the man advantage. It will potentially turn into a five on four for the final nine seconds. But that's a long way away, dumped out by the Blue Devils. Kyle Oliveira, one of the co-captains of this team, will carry it up the near wing. All the way down into the corner, he'll wrap it behind the net, feeling some pressure from Zhang as he circles all the way out up top, still Oliveira. Drops it to the point for Carlson. Across and swung deep by Jake's Jackson Thomas. Behind the net, a couple of Tar Heels battling with a Blue Devil penalty killer as it's tied up. And this is exactly what Duke wants. Puck not in a dangerous position and not moving quickly. Tied up nicely by Ryan Feinberg. He's finally been knocked to the ice. And now the Tar Heels will control. Back to the point. Sent out in front and one timed out of the zone by Feinberg. And uh, that was a heck of a penalty kill effort by Ryan Feinberg. Great job. He did a, uh, an amazing job behind the net. That's a very tiring uh, activity to do. To have two guys beating on you while you're just trying to keep the puck there stationary. Great work and then getting it out of the zone. Uh, Duke in control again. Under 40 seconds left on the man advantage. This power play has not looked as good for the Tar Heels as the first one. And it's cleared down once again. Matt Richard with a little bit of pressure sends it up the middle for Jesse Jacobs. Left off for Adamson, no crisscross down the far wing. Adamson gets it deep, but not deep enough. And it's cleared out again by the Blue Devil penalty kill. Five seconds away from the matching minors coming out. And it'll be Turkovic and Regan out of the box as we're down to under 10 seconds on the man advantage. Carolina playing with it at their own blue line. They'll try to dump it deep, knocked right back out by the Blue Devil defense. Adamson gloves it down and clears it back up ice. And what Luce. you're seeing here really, Chris, is uh, Coach being very strategically giving his two centers a little bit of a break, putting the wingers out there on the four on three situation and now the five on four, uh, just to give them a little extra breather since they're doing a lot of skating tonight. Uh, Duke in tight, we've got a man down and another penalty. This will be the third of the period for the Tar Heels and it looks to be Matt Richard 
And I believe that'll be his second. Now, I guess technically the too many men in the ice penalty goes against the UNC bench. Richards, Richard, pardon me, served it. But he'll go again for a trip. Uh, and that was just a turnover in a bad position that led to that penalty. That's right. So, you know, third penalty of the period. You know, we'd like to see, I, I'm sure a coach would like to see a cleaner game at this point. Just too many for one period. 7.34 to go in the second. Still a 6-0 lead for the Blue Devils. They scored early on this period to add to that advantage. Duke looking to set up the power play, though, for the second time this period as Jones controls it for UNC in the far corner. He'll sweep it out on the Blue Devil defense outside of the zone. Not sure why there. Possibly could have kept that in. Again, Jones will clear it out. And Duke controls on their defensive end. Out in neutral ice, getting a skate to it was Beeson, and he'll clear it deep again. Kramer putting the pressure on for the UNC penalty kill. Flips it to the far corner, shoveled up into the middle of the ice by Frown, and it'll be carried in to the UNC zone. This will give Duke a chance to set up the power play. 1.15 left on the man advantage. Around the boards to the far side. It'll be controlled by Duke. Thrown on net, blockered away by Douthat, who stands tall and it skitters out of the zone. Blue Devils resetting. Great rebound redirection there, intentionally by Douthat, over to the empty area of the ice, and it got it out of the zone. Uh, we'll be going to four on four hockey, a trip in the far corner. And Duke will end their man advantage with a penalty of their own, and it'll be four on four for 53 seconds. Well, this, after, as you mentioned earlier, a pretty clean first period, uh, particularly on that penalty sheet, uh, these, both of these teams getting a little bit sloppy in the second. Yeah, and sometimes you see that, you know, after a, a really intense first period, Duke's a little bit tired. UNC is, you know, maybe just a teeny bit complacent, and now you're starting to see a little bit of sloppy play, and I'm sure Coach will talk to them at the intermission about that. Uh, and we talked about it early on in the game as a chance coming off a steal for the Tar Heels. Friedman throws it on goal, and he scores. A wicked wrister from the freshman. And it's seven nothing UNC. Friedman again, really using his speed. He loops across through the center part of the ice and picks the far corner as the goalie drifts over to play him. Really had a lot of open net to shoot at and snipered it in. Great job. Uh, it's tough for a, a goaltender when he has to slide across and then try and reach back because Friedman did go back across his body with that shot. It becomes difficult to reach back and make that safe. So 6.20 to go in the period. 7-0 UNC, still 40 seconds left on the four on four. And then it'll turn into about a minute of power play hockey for Duke. Nice job by Oliveira, riding down his man and working it around to the near side boards. Kept in by Feinberg. He'll slip in front, tripped up as he takes the shot. He'll knock the net off. But Douthat swallows up the rebound and will get a face off right here in front of us in the near circle. Good patience by the Duke forward, walking that puck in, uh, taking some time to take a shot, and a really nice job by Douthat of, of getting big in the net and taking away uh, space for the shooter to have anything to work with. So 134 left on the penalty to the Blue Devils. 26 seconds left on the UNC penalty. So they'll have just over a minute of power play hockey here and about half a minute. Well, they'll win the faceoff and immediately get it deep. Poked further down behind the net by Jacobs. But the Tar Heels can't control. Cleared out down the far boards. Tracked down by the Tar Heels in neutral ice at his own blue line. Whelan headbands the puck. It'll slip all the way back behind the Duke cage. Two seconds left on the, on the penalty to Richard. He'll head off, and it's a man advantage for UNC. One-timer from the near point right into the glove of... Luther, and so we'll get a chance here to see UNC set up the power play off of faceoff, a minute two left, but a great chance here to add to that lead. That sure is, and by our tally, that's Luther's 31st save of the night, <laughs> so he's definitely getting a workout. 5.29 left in the period, 102 left on the penalty to Duke. Kramer to take the faceoff for the Tar Heels, can't win it, and it'll be Will Frown Circling around and then sweeping the puck back to the near sideboards. Kept in by the Tar Heels. 
And they'll set up the power play. Centering pass, misses everybody, and it will slide all the way down the ice for Douthat to come out and play. Jones collects it behind his cage. Side steps, one stick check. Now it'll be knocked loose, and UNC going to have to reset again. Whelan, rink wide for Regan on the near side. He'll move forward. Cuts across in the neutral zone to the far wing. Stops along the hashes, dropped off the boards for Whelan, saved in at the blue line by Kramer, and he'll walk it in to the center. Rebound left out in front and cleared by the Duke defense. Now lifted all the way out, and that should finish off the power play as this one gets all the way down to Douthat with five seconds left on the man advantage. A couple of good opportunities there, John, but not as good as that first one we saw in the first period. Absolutely right. Getting some good opportunities, but just not being able to convert them. Oh, one and stuck there's, in there. There's another one for Friedman. Slipped it high on the short side against Luther. And by my count, if I'm not mistaken, that's four now for Friedman. Four goals for Friedman tonight, almost all of which are really generated by his incredible speed. You can really see he's creating time and space for himself and, and, and creating open ice through that speed uh, to get some quality scoring opportunities. So eight, nothing UNC, as you heard, half of those goals going to Friedman. By the way, in six games so far, Friedman with just five goals. So he's just about doubled his total in this game alone. In the near corner, in the UNC zone, they'll battle for it. Duke trying to find something positive out of this one. There's Friedman again, and beating the defenseman. And he'll get it to the middle, a little bit behind his intended target, stuffed on goal by Karen. Luther up to the task, and the rebound collected by Jung, and we have another penalty coming up. This will be a trip behind the Duke net, and UNC will have to kill off another penalty. Uh, and those are the ones you don't want to see. It's Zach Nodden headed to the box. Those penalties that are 180 feet from your own net are, are the worst kind of penalties. That's absolutely right. You could tell as soon as it happened, he threw his head back in frustration. You know, really unfortunate here, but at least we're getting to see the UNC penalty kill, and we'll see if it can kill off yet another penalty. Well, it'll be Graham, Karen, Noah Friedman out there with Matt Richards, Richard, pardon me, and Josh Carlson. Friedman sweeps it the length of the ice. Or it'll be stopped behind the goal by Luther. And a good start to the penalty kill for UNC. They'll get a chance to set up the full ice pressure. Uh, they're going to put on a pretty quality four check here with four men out on the ice. Friedman being a pest down in the near corner. And he'll continue to hold it there. Circling back behind their own net, the Blue Devil defense trying to clear it out. It's deflected but it does get into neutral ice where the Blue Devils can move forward. Cut to the near side, and it'll be dumped deep where Richard tracks it down in the far corner, hops his stick, but he's able to track it down. He's got space to move forward. Gaining speed through the neutral zone. He'll cut to the middle, and he has to leave it as Carlson got in early, but a chance to get some changes on the penalty kill for UNC. Richard. And transition, clears it back into neutral ice again. Regan now out there with Beeson. Richard still out there with Karen as the defensive pairing. Under a minute left on the penalty kill for the Tar Heels. A bad clearance from Richard will give Duke a chance here. Pass to the middle, blocked in the skates by Karen, still loose, thrown over the net, might have been deflected on the shot from Bentlin. And Duke can set up the power play here. 2.23 to go in the period, circling. Bentlin back to the point for Frown. He'll wrist one towards the net, deflected, blockered away twice by Douthit. And Karen will wrap it around the boards to the far side. Beeson pins it there, leaves it for Richards, who pitch forks it out and all the way down. It's probably the best scoring chance we've seen from Duke in a while. They had good traffic in front of the net, really took away Douthit's field of vision, and had a nice quality scoring opportunity. And we've got a bit of a scrum down in the corner. And a whistle to stop play. We'll see if anyone's headed to the sin bin here with 1.54 to go in the period. And it does look like at least one will go. And we'll wait to see the call. Looks like one from each side, as you would expect there. Regan going to the box for UNC. Duke will send Ryan Feinberg. And it'll be four on three here for eight seconds for UNC. 
So not much of a power play chance here. It's going to have to come quick for the Tar Heels, but it will be four on four for the duration of the period after these first eight seconds. Face-off won by Carlson, too well behind him and out of the zone. Oliveira will retreat with the puck to his own blue line. Left on the near side boards for an open teammate and Thomas. He'll force it forward. UNC looking to establish the zone. And they can barely get it in. Duke turns it back out. Four on four for the rest of the period. Chris, that's actually even strength. It was, must have been a matching penalty. They have it five on five. So they will be five on five. Good catch, John. As it moves up the near side. Rister whistles over the net for Duke. Not a bad chance trying to catch Douthit sleeping. But play will continue. Back behind, jumping out of his net. Douthit stops it behind. Left for Oliveira. Swung up the far boards, kept in by the Blue Devils. They'll battle for it in the corner. Knocked loose, Zach Nodden will come away with it. Kicks it up those far boards, forced further, and now out by Jesse Jacobs. He's got space to the near side for Carlson. Around one defender, can't take the puck with him, and Duke gets it out. They've got a man changing in a long pass up ice, and a nice job by Oliveira getting back to shoulder that one away. They'll battle for it at the UNC blue line. Kicks back to the Tar Heel defense. Cleared out into neutral ice. Friedman pokes it free. He'll move forward. In and out, trying to get around the defenseman, but he can't. And he forces it deep along the far boards. And it'll be knocked out of the zone as the Blue Devils trying to alleviate the pressure. 20 seconds left in the period. An 8 nothing lead for Duke. They've scored, or pardon me, for UNC as they... Look for another. Kramer throws it out in front. Can't get it to go. Working behind the net. Duke takes possession with five seconds to go in the period. And it'll be thrown off the glass and down the ice to finish off the second 20 minutes. Well, it wasn't quite as clean of a period, John, but another three tallies on the board for UNC and a comfortable 8 Nothing lead after 40 minutes. Very comfortable lead. I imagine if you're Coach Volkman, you're not really too happy with that period. Pretty sloppy play from UNC. Five penalties. Uh, obviously, the score's lopsided you know, with three additional goals, but not as crisp of a team game as we saw in the first period. Well, we're going to step aside for just a moment. 40 minutes of play done. There will be six seconds, not much, but six seconds of penalty time to the two matching minors. It uh, will be five on five, but there will be two men in the box to start the period. We're going to come back with the main offensive producer for UNC tonight, Noah Friedman, four goals already. We'll get a chance to talk to him at the intermission. We'll be right back, an 8 nothing lead after two periods for UNC. I'm Mason Regan. I'm a junior on the team this year. Uh, check out our new website, unchockey.com. We have our team schedule, roster. Um, we have a team store set up, too, and it's for a 501c company, so all donations are tax deductible. I'll see his place sometime. Our Newsbeat reports on the local stories in our town. Everything from sushi and BLTs to the makers and volunteers who are investing in making our town a better place to live. You'll find Tar Heel Newsbeat in the streaming channel section of your Roku. News and weather for the untethered. From the reserves of Topo Organic Distillery in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, comes Eight Oak Whiskey. Aged with the heads already removed on eight different chars of American and French oak. Topos, eight oak whiskey, and limited reserves at all ABC stores.
I'm Mason Regan. I'm a junior on the team this year. Uh, check out our new website, unchockey.com. We have our team schedule, roster, uh, and we have a team store set up too, and it's for a 501c company, so all donations are tax deductible. Come out and see us play sometime. The day's top trending topics, local weather, world news, and since we all enjoy a little recreation time, City Newsbeat streams human interest stories, entertainment news, science and space stories, food recipes, cocktail recipes, even horoscopes. Go to the search channel section and tap in Newsbeat on the keyboard, then open the app. Without any more work on your part, the local stories of the day begin to play. Try City Newsbeat. News and weather for the untethered. We're back after 40 minutes here in Hillsborough. UNC with an 8 nothing lead, three more goals added in the second period. Half of the goals tonight, though, scored by this man standing with me now, Noah Friedman, having a heck of a night so far. What are you seeing out there that has got you putting it in the back of the net so much? Well, um, my line mates are working really hard to get me the puck, and we're all moving our feet, and it's all pass shoot score. That's all we need out there. All right, well, we, we talked with one of your teammates and Patrick Kramer in the first intermission. He talked about being disciplined getting into the second. Yeah. Got away from that a little bit. A lot of penalties on both sides in that second period. Uh, how did that kind of affect the play, and how do you fix that headed to the last frame? Yeah, well, it definitely slowed the play down, and uh, we're definitely going to look to make, make a change in the third. But we did well in the first, and we need to come back uh, strong and play clean and just clean up our game. Well, I certainly have a little bit of leeway, an 8 nothing lead, headed to the final 20 minutes. What do you guys as a team want to focus on? Obviously, this is kind of a chance to get a little bit of extra practice in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we just want to keep moving our feet. I think we've been doing that really well the whole game and just uh, get pucks in deep and uh, keep moving our feet. I think that's all we need. All right, Noah, thanks for taking some time. I'll let you get back to the locker room, get back with your teammates, and good luck in the third. All right, thank you. All right, that's Noah Friedman of the Tar Heels. We'll be right back. John Johnson will join me. We'll break down the second period and look ahead to what's next in the third. Eight nothing Tar Heels after 40 minutes. From the reserves of Topo Organic Distillery in Chapel Hill, North Carolina comes Eight Oak Whiskey. Aged with the heads already removed on eight different chars of American and French oak. Topo's Eight Oak Whiskey. Limited reserves at all ABC stores. I'm Mason Regan. I'm a junior on the team this year. Uh, check out our new website, unchockey.com. We have our team schedule, roster, uh, and we have a team store set up too, and it's for a 501c company, so all donations are tax deductible. Come out and see us play sometime. Our Hill Newsbeat reports on the local stories in our town. Everything from sushi and BLTs to the makers and volunteers who are investing in making our town a better place to live. You'll find Tar Heel Newsbeat in the streaming channel section of your Roku. News and weather for the untethered. From the reserves of Topo Organic Distillery in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, comes Eight Oak Whiskey. Aged with the heads already removed on eight different chars of American and French oak. Topo's Eight Oak Whiskey. Limited reserves at all ABC stores. Chris Lehman, John Johnson back with you here at the Orange County Sportsplex. Again, an 8 nothing lead for UNC over Duke here in a Wednesday night rivals ACCHL edition. John, a little bit more sloppy play in that second period. They do, though, the Tar Heels put up three more goals. Uh, the power play, one thing that we saw looked pretty good in the first, not quite as successful in the second. Yeah, I think you're, you're seeing 
uh, a little bit of the sloppiness that we see resulting in penalties also carrying over to the power play. You know, when you get that big of a lead, suddenly you, you're really not as focused on being patient coming into the zone, getting set up on that power play. The very first power play that they scored on, we saw the 1-3-1 one, one work perfectly. Daniel Jones snuck in back door. They had good puck movement. They set him up and they scored. We really haven't seen that, that patience and getting set up on the power play. So we'd like to see that. On the plus side, we have seen a really good display of speed from Noah Friedman. Really impressive, generating time and space and creating opportunities for himself that have resulted in goals during that period. Well, and as you mentioned, there were penalties on the other side for UNC as well. So they weren't just on the power play. They had to kill some off, and they killed them all. What looked good from the penalty kill that you saw? From the penalty kill, I thought uh, we saw at times Graham Karen, for example, using the blue line to his advantage, uh, really stifling the entry into the zone. We also saw a really aggressive forecheck on the last penalty kill uh, that really uh, frustrated Duke. Uh, it can be really frustrating when you have the man advantage to spend 20, 30 seconds back in your own zone trying to regroup and break out. And that, that starts to play in your head and you start to rush things as you enter into the offensive zone. So I, see, I think we're seeing a little bit of that really frustrating the Duke power play and preventing them from setting up, uh, except in very few limited circumstances during that period. Uh, and I talked a little bit about this with Noah Friedman, uh, and, and you mentioned it a bit. With a big lead, you kind of lose focus uh, sometimes as a team. What are you telling your team if you're head coach Jeff Volkman heading to the third? Obviously, the game not really at risk with a big lead, but you do want to get something productive out of the last 20 minutes. So I'm looking at the 20 minutes as sort of an extended practice period. Obviously, we should win the game bar but catastrophe, but I want to get back more to the basics. So I, I want a little less individualistic play. I want to be a little more patient uh, setting up the offense as we come into the zone. Now is a good time to work on skills that we'll be using against higher skill level teams. So really working on pace, working on our crisp passes, working on efficient shift changes and uh, short effective shifts. And so really getting back to basics, some of the things we saw in the first period that contributed to success. Well, we can see if UNC gets back to those ways that we saw in the first period here very shortly. 8 nothing lead for the Tar Heels, just about ready to start third period action. We'll be back with that puck drop in just a second. I'm Mason Regan. I'm a junior on the team this year. Uh, check out our new website, unchockey.com. We have our team schedule, roster, uh, and we have team store set up too, and it's for a 501c company, so all donations are tax deductible. Come out and see us play sometime. Our Hill Newsbeat reports on the local stories in our town. Everything from sushi and BLTs to the makers and volunteers who are investing in making our town a better place to live. You'll find Tar Heel Newsbeat in the streaming channel section of your Roku. News and weather for the untethered. From the reserves of Topo Organic Distillery in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, comes Eight Oak Whiskey, aged with the heads already removed on eight different chars of American and French oak. Topo's Eight Oak Whiskey, limited reserves at all ABC stores. I'm Mason Regan. I'm a junior on the team this year. Uh, check out our new website, unchockey.com. We have our team schedule, roster, uh, and we have team store set up too, and it's for a 501c company, so all donations are tax deductible. Come out and see us play sometime.
Hill Newsbeat reports on the local stories in our town. Everything from sushi and BLTs to the makers and volunteers who are investing in making our town a better place to live. You'll find Tar Hill Newsbeat in the streaming channel section of your Roku. News and weather for the untethered. From the reserves of Topo Organic Distillery in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, comes Eight Oak Whiskey aged with the heads already removed on eight different chars of American and French oak. Topos 8 Oak Whiskey. Limited reserves at all ABC stores. We're back at the Orange County Sportsplex in Hillsboro, North Carolina. Third and final period between your UNC Tar Heels and the Duke Blue Devils. Five goals in the first period, three in the second for the Tar Heels, and it is an eight-nothing advantage. Now there is six seconds left on matching penalties uh, between the Blue Devils and the Tar Heels. It'll be Ryan Feinberg and Mason Regan in for six seconds. Of course, can't come out because we are playing five on five with them in the box. They'll be in until the first whistle of this period. Although, as we mentioned, John, as we get this period back underway, UNC going to try to avoid putting more men in that sin bin here in the last 20 minutes. Absolutely, you know, Coach Volkman wants to see a disciplined game, so I'm sure he's gonna to wanna to eliminate penalties this period, create good habits going into the next game. Uh, wrist shot from the top of the far circle, blockered away off the stick of Kramer. Luther continuing to be as strong as he can, facing a flurry of shots tonight from UNC. Puck will bounce past Kramer and out on the near side. He'll track it down and retreat into his own end. Sloppy pass, fanned on it as well, and a chance here for Duke off the metal on the far post. Great chance there for Sam Bentlin, and now the Tar Heels look to break it out. Down the near boards. They'll carry it into the zone as Jones Brings a defender with him. Pass to the middle from Jones on the near side. Intercepted, poked up the near boards. A nice job saving it in the zone by Jesse Jacobs. And eventually it pops loose. The Blue Devils get possession and bring it up through neutral ice. Stopping on the far circle. And a wrist shot in on Douthat. He'll make an easy save. And we're underway. Both teams getting their legs back under him here in the third. 14 saves for Douthat tonight. He's had a couple tough saves that he had to make with shots through the center part of the ice, but otherwise, uh, pretty easy evening for him. Uh, and a lot of times, those those nights where it isn't quite as busy can be the most difficult. And we've seen him, as you mentioned, make a couple of nice saves, really kind of out of the blue. So 18:45 left in the game. Stretch pass misses everybody. Long bounce off the boards comes to. Regan, who centers it off the side of the net. And then the pass from the near corner, Beeson misses everybody and clears the zone for Duke. So the Tar Heels retreat all the way back. It'll be slowed down by Douthat behind the net. UNC, not a great breakout, but they get it out of the zone. Coming out of his net to play the puck. We have, do have a new netminder in, and Tom Bunning. And we'll get a whistle and a stoppage. But uh, a chance here to see the other netminder as Luther, as we mentioned, looked better than the stat sheet. Yeah, Luther, I thought, played a, a, a quality game, faced a ton of shots, a ton of high quality shots, and, and really made some solid saves. So the first couple of tests, not the easiest for Benning. And it'll be controlled by UNC off the face off. Bad pass from Carlson to the middle is tipped out of the zone and carried up the far boards. Forced in with one hand on the stick by the Blue Devils, cleared back out by the Tar Heel defense. Sent right back by Feinberg, and it'll be corralled by Jackson Thomas. Leaves it for his defensive partner, gets it right back on the near side. Looking up, Ice will throw it off the boards just out of the reach of Carlson. And the pass through neutral ice deflects off a Duke stick and down behind the Tar Heel net. And a hit in the corner, knocks the puck loose. UNC will control. Cotton skates in a slap shot from the middle of the slot. Sticked away by Douthat. And Duke starting to put some pressure on. Along the far boards, pass intercepted and brought back out. Two on one for the Tar Heels. Wrist shot blocked at the defense as Kramer couldn't get it through to the net. 
And Duke looking to counter. Nice hit by Kramer in neutral ice. He'll knock his man off the puck. And curl back around to the far boards. Forces it down and into that far corner. UNC looks to forecheck. Cleared up the far side, swept back in. But it'll wrap around the boards and all the way out. I'm looking for a little bit more organization. We're seeing more passes like the one there that results in an icing. Those long stretch passes well, that have not been on the mark. And you're seeing that because the first couple of shifts, the forwards are not coming back into the zone to help with the breakout. They're a little more stationary. What I would say is they're coasting. As a coach, you want your forwards coming back in every shift, making that life easier for their defensemen, presenting better targets. So it'll be a defensive zone faceoff after the icing in the UNC end. They'll bring it behind their own net and out. Oliveira. Or Jones, pardon me, a quick backhand pass to the near wing. Swept deep by Jacobs. And the far corner controlled by UNC. Jacobs giving chase once again on the near side. Can't get to it, and Duke clears. But again, the Tar Heels doing a great job of making it difficult for Duke to possess outside of their own zone. And another long clear will be too short for icing. And UNC will have to break it out. Through the middle, pass finds the stick of Jacobs. He's in, a chance moving to the goal. Pad save made by Bunning. And they'll fight for it along the far side. At the blue line, pinching was Oliveira. He couldn't hold the zone. And Karen will have to chase it down on the near boards. He'll be rubbed off, and it'll be thrown in front, padded away by Douthit. And UNC clears another long pass that misses everybody and goes for icing. Well, you mentioned... UNC not doing a good job with that breakout. The wingers not getting back, and we continue to see the defense just have to swing it out of the zone. Yeah, you really, you, if you get a little lazy at the winger position, you are expecting your defenseman to make sort of a perfect long-distance pass, and that's really challenging to do, even for a high-skill defenseman. Off the faceoff, one forward towards the goal for the Blue Devils, but they can't deflect it on net, and we'll get a whistle in the corner. And Chris, this is probably the best five minutes of hockey Duke's played in this game. You know, it's been pretty even overall. Shot total's pretty balanced, and the tempo's pretty balanced. You know, they're frustrating UNC at this point. Uh, and it's looking a lot like those first seven or so minutes before anyone got on the board, where UNC having trouble through neutral ice. Bolt here as they break it out quickly, moving down the near wing from the top of the circle. It's Beeson with a wrister, and a glove save made by Bunning. So with 15-13 to go, an offensive zone faceoff for UNC. And uh, maybe a impressive. chance here. Bunning's done a nice job coming in cold. Five saves so far. Uh, now a chance to set up the offense for the Tar Heels. One to the near boards. Beeson tried to throw it towards the net. It'll be deflected back around to the far boards. Taken behind the cage by the Blue Devils. Centering pass intercepted by Beeson. Loose in the slot will be collected by Luke Turkovich and he'll circle out with pressure from Regan up the near boards. Steps around a defenseman and clears it deep. He'll chase it down in the corner and takes a man down with him on a hit in that corner. They'll scrum for it behind the Tar Heel net. They'll be forced up the board, sent right back in by Freighter, and Duke looking to possess. Jong loses control of the puck. Tar Heels clear it out along the boards. It'll be taken up by Kramer, moving in, forehand, backhand, he slips it in. Beautiful finish by Patrick Kramer as he played it off the boards around a defenseman and then went inside out on the netminder Bunning. Uh, now you're getting a chance to see some of the individual skill, John. You know, Kramer made a nice move there. He got past the defenseman and he was patient. Bunning made a, a, a valiant effort to make the save, but really nice goal there. So the lead moves to nine with just under 15 minutes to play in the game. Clearance in on Douthit, he'll sweep it to the far corner. Karen sends it up the boards, kept in by Duke. Up at the point, Friedman will retreat behind his own net, but he won't be able to go very far. An interference call coming up on UNC. Uh, and that didn't look like an intentional hit from the penalized tar here, which will be sophomore Graham Karen, but he gets tangled up with the Blue Devil and another chance for Duke on the power play.
Uh, and that's one good thing. You don't like taking the penalties, but if you're Duke or if you're UNC, uh, you can't afford to give up a goal here, and it gives your penalty kill at least some practice. You know, you have to look at the bright side. I'm sure Coach is not happy about that after five <laughs> penalties in the second period. Did not want to see another one. You know, that said, it's probably not as egregious as a penalty as some of the other ones we've seen. So Duke controls far point. Spinning around, it'll be backhanded deep behind the net. The Tar Heel defense slaps it up the near boards, but again, it won't get out. A fight for it in the near corner. Squirts loose behind the net. Controlled by Duke, and they haven't really been able to get any space. Frown throws one towards the net, deflects away, and it'll be slapped back in from the far point. Still Duke in control. 30 seconds gone on the power play. Far corner, centering pass, loose in the slot, and the one-timer from the near circle, well wide uh, from Will Frown, and the Tar Heels clear it all the way out. 13.25 to go in the game. 1.15 left on the power play for Duke, and it'll be moved up the near side. Rink wide pass, poked along through neutral ice, but Duke can't keep possession, and again, the UNC penalty kill clears it deep. We've seen Jake Wheeland out there a lot tonight uh, on the penalty kill. He's been doing a really nice job out there on deep. On a four check on here, centering pass, shorthanded chance, but the backhand attempt from Carlson doesn't get much to it and it's deflected into the near corner where Duke can clear it out. They'll run it down the near wing, and a rub out will give UNC a chance to clear it down the ice again. Freighter stops behind his own net with it, and he will let the Blue Devils set up a breakout. 30 ticks left on the penalty clock, 12 and a half to go in the game. Brown gains the blue line, stops there, sends it county corner to the near side, chasing it down, Felix Jung. He'll send it back up the near boards. Nobody there to receive it, and it's all the way down. That should just about finish off this power play for the Blue Devils as UNC gets a little more aggressive on the penalty kill. Stolen up near the point by the Tar Heels. Centered for Adamson, and he can't get it to the net. Well defended by the Blue Devils. And the penalty has come to an end. We're back to full strength hockey with 12 minutes to play. Weaving through the neutral zone. Duke looking really for a good chance. It'll be poked loose at the blue line, offsides for the Blue Devils, and a neutral zone faceoff coming. But we're starting to see the Tar Heels get back to their game. They were able to set up and get a couple chances there, even down a man. Yep, you know, just using their speed, coming into the zone, uh, really keeping Duke on their heels. And as we saw in some of the earlier penalty kills, kind of keeping Duke frustrated and getting set up, uh, especially in the later part of that penalty kill. Tar Heels moving forward off the faceoff. Kramer controls in the far corner. He'll lift it around. Behind the net, it's Beeson. In front, it's deflected right back to him to the top of the near circle. Wrist shot coming, and it whistles wide off the stick of Jones from the far point. Thrown on net. Again, knocked away. Now Jones again. High slot. Getting a stick to it was Bunning. And now Beeson takes control in the near corner. He'll work back to the point. And he can't keep it in, loses his footing, a chance for Duke if they can get to it. But Beeson back to his feet and at least deflects it to the side by the benches to avoid a quick counter from Duke. Moving down the near wing now for the Tar Heels is Karen. Sweeps it in front. There's a Duke stick there to clear it out to the sideboards. Kramer stumbling, loses control. Turkovich lifts it up and out. And Duke can release some pressure. So a couple of chances there for Duke as we get an icing call. But John, they didn't quite get connected there even though they did get set up in the zone. Yeah, that's true. You know, it's just, just one of those nights for them. So, uh, you know, we'll just have to see if they can do any better here coming up. Near circle face off coming up for UNC in the offensive zone. Friedman to take it against Nathan Shaw. Friedman wins it back to the near point, wrapped around into the corner. Friedman sent it out in front, poked to the front of the net, and it looked like Nodden got a piece of it out of the air, couldn't put it on goal. Still the Tar Heels in control. Back to the near point, slapper coming, misses the near post from Richard, and it'll squirt back to the high slot. Nodden backhands it towards goal, deflected to the far side. Duke gets it out, but not much further as the Tar Heels turn it back into the zone. Friedman down the near wing. He's done a lot of good work on this near side. He'll get behind the net and stop. Sends it back behind his back and right to a Blue Devil defender. Friedman clears it up the boards, not out. Now he'll get back to it and knock it off the boards and down into the UNCN. 
halfway through the third period. Duke has given up one more as the Tar Heels lead is now nine. And they'll fight for it in neutral ice. Loose puck picked up by Josh Carlson. Swings it across, taken off the boards. At the defense by the Tar Heels. Lifted out, gloved down by Will Frown. But he'll have to leave it with a man off sides. This gives UNC a chance to break it out once again. But those forwards, you can see him posted really high up at the red line. And another pass intercepted at the defense. Frown will backhand it into the near corner. Right, pretty much stationary up there at the red line at times. And you know, that's, that's really hindering the overall flow of the UNC attack. Even if that forward catches the pass, he's at a dead stop and he's got to pick up speed. UNC moving up ice, cutting to the middle with it is Adamson. He'll have it poked off his stick to the near corner, gets back to it, centering pass, deflected again to that far corner. Playing catch behind the net with Adamson is Jacobs. He'll hold it in the near corner. Back to the point, Oliveira. Swung back behind, taken off the boards again by Kramer. He'll circle to the front in the slot and he wrists it home. High near corner and a good finish from Kramer to make it 10-0. Well, that play was all set up by a good play down low, pass up to the point to Oliveira. Oliveira mishandles it a little bit, but makes a really smart play of dumping it back in low, allowing Kramer to regain control, and then Kramer does what he does, forming a half circle here, and then taking a really fast wrister that scores. Uh, I think Duke might be a little bit relieved to see the clock with a 10-0 lead now for UNC will run. So eight and a half to go, and that's eight and a half even with stoppages with the run clock. UNC turning up the pressure on the offensive end. Floats off the near side boards, knocked back in by Oliveira. Out to the center point, wrist shot blocked on the shot from Wheeland. And it'll be controlled by UNC on the far board. Centered by Naden, nobody there to send it on goal. Turkovic turns it up those far boards. Wheeland pinches to save, and he'll drop it back to the point. One time slap shot to flex in front and over the net. Kramer had a good chance for another. And the centering pass will be cleared out now by Duke. Carried out by Freighter. Poked away nicely at the defense, and that'll force Duke to clear it in. Behind the net, Douthit settles it down. 7.45 to go as it swung up the far boards. Getting a touch to it, Nodden. Trying to break in in control, but he stopped up at the blue line. And Duke a chance to get it deep again. Oh, and it really seems like the Blue Devils, John, are, are just trying to gain the zone and get it deep and maybe find something after that. You know, they're just looking for a little bit of luck, some spark. But, you know, and at this point, they're, they're trying to just do everything individually and they're just not having much success. And now a chance for Karen, wrapping behind the net. He'll drop it to the point, far side. Wrist shot coming, blocked in traffic. The rebound swatted home. Uh, and I believe it was Beeson, he and Regan both standing in the slot. And that'll make it 11 to nothing. But to, to get back to the point about Duke just struggling to gain the offensive zone and control, uh, we haven't talked about it as much since the beginning of the game, but a short bench, so you can start to see that short showing. Short bench, you're seeing fatigue, and what you're seeing is the team starts to lose. The, you know, they start to move away from the fundamentals. And again, the forwards were very low in that situation. The UNC points were wide open, and it really resulted in a quality scoring chance for the UNC defenseman, which was put away at that point by Beeson. In the far corner, going down, Nodden, but he gets it to a teammate in Jacobs. So UNC controls in the offensive end. Again, Nodden hit. That was a little bit away from the puck. He's going to go back at the Duke defender, uh, and that is not something that head coach Jeff Volkman is going to be happy with. He had a power play coming, and now it goes to even strength as Nodden will get one for the retaliation. Yeah, it's a little bit understandable on Nodden's part. Duke... Uh Defenseman number three there. This is his third penalty of the night. So he's been playing a more physical, rougher game. Obviously, this is his third penalty. So, you know, sometimes you understand that, why your teammate might uh, take a little whack or a little extra liberty with him. But still, as a coach, you want your team to have a little more composure and avoid that type of penalty. Uh, and again, uh, we've mentioned it plenty, but that won't come back to hurt uh, the Tar Heels in this one with the, the clock running. And they've stopped it for a moment to sort out the penalties. Uh, but it stopped with six minutes left. And they are actually, it looks like, going to send this Duke player off the ice for the remainder of this game, right, due to the, the number of penalties that he has taken. And he is certainly making his case on the way off the ice. But it will be, as it appears, four on four for these two teams 
with the two penalties coming here. So get a, a quick stoppage uh, and a chance to, to go back over things. It, it really was a, a solid first period. I think that was really uh, where the Tar Heels peaked tonight. And as we, we've talked about plenty, once they got up big, they got away from those fundamentals. Yeah, I, I think that's exactly what you're seeing. You saw uh, an amazing first period, a well, really high quality first period resulted in five goals. The team did everything right from power play to, to five on five play. Uh, and then in the second period, you saw them get sloppy, take uh, unnecessary penalties, take penalties just from a lack of attention. Too many men on the ice, for example, uh, was one of the penalties that they had. And, and that's just really not being in tune with what's going on in the game. And it's carried over a little bit here in the third period. So, you know, whereas this team has traditionally gotten stronger as the game goes on, we're seeing a little bit of the opposite here. And, and sometimes that happens when the game turns a little lopsided. So 5.59 left on the clock. And an offensive zone faceoff for UNC. They will play five on five as they have put it back to full strength with the matching penalties. And we will continue to play. UNC looking to break out of their own zone. Swatted up the far boards. It does get into neutral ice, but Friedman there to stall it out. We've got another delayed call coming. This one will go against UNC. There's the whistle. And I believe that was an elbowing signal from the official. We'll get it again here as the guilty party for UNC will be Daniel Jones. And it is an elbowing call, two-minute minor for the defenseman. And a chance here on the power play for Duke. 5.16 left in the game. Face off in the far circle to the right of Douthit. It'll get tied up. In that circle, eventually possessed by the Blue Devils. Back at the point, Friedman throws it towards the goal, and it'll be deflected just wide. And into the near corner. Duke still in control, but the man up. Centered in front, loose puck is left there. Nobody finishes for Duke. And they'll continue to work on the power play. Low slot, scrum for it, tied up in the skates, and it'll be cleared to the near boards. And a little bit of a scuffle in front, but play continues. Another man down in the corner. It's a Blue Devil, but Duke still maintains possession. 40 seconds gone on the power play. Slap shot in on Douthit, and he'll cover up the rebound with 4.30 to go. And again, with a double-digit lead, that clock rolling. And we'll get an offensive zone faceoff for Duke. Well, they've done a good job. They haven't been able to get organized and really possess the puck here, but they have kept it in the offensive zone. They have. You know, the penalty kill's done its job, but really it's, it's kept away a lot of the high probability scoring chances that uh, you want to avoid on a power play. That said, you know, probably a little bit better uh, focus on clearing maybe uh, because Duke has had some sustained time in the zone. Another shot from the point to flex away. Douthit's reaction says he didn't know where it went. Fortunately, it was wide of the net, and UNC clears. All the way down, Felix Jung. He'll be pressured by Karen. Stolen away, Karen sends it in front. It slides through the blue paint, but nobody there to finish once again. Understandable, though, on a shorthanded situation for the Tar Heels, just looking to pressure Duke all the way up the ice. 15 seconds left on the man advantage for the Blue Devils. Three and a half left in the game as Zhang works down the far left wing. He'll drop it back to the point. To the near side, Frown. Wrists one wide and can't douth it out of his net. Makes the cover behind the goal line on an awkward carom off the boards. But that will finish up the penalty and we'll be back to even strength with just over three minutes to go. Uh, that's uh, another thing we've seen. You talked about it a bit in that second period, John, was every good scoring chance, every good look that Duke has had seems to have gone wide. Well, that's true. You know, it, it's something that coaches emphasize a lot, especially younger players. They like to shoot high. Uh, you know, it's Well, that one went low yeah. and found the back of the net. It'll be Will Frown from the near right point, finished it off, and that will break up the shutout with under three minutes to go for Will Douthit. Uh, and that would have been an opportunity at the first shutout of the season. And the season opener at Christopher Newport, UNC allowed just one goal. That was the season low up to this point, and it will stay that way with the goal as the power play expired for Will Frown. It'll be one forward into the UNC zone by Duke. A little bit of extra energy 
after the goal goes home. Quick breakout, pretty clean out of the far side of the zone for UNC, forced through the neutral zone by Regan, but he couldn't get it into the zone cleanly. That will result in an offside and will be brought out for a faceoff. Well, I'm sure Coach Volkman won't be happy about that. You know, to give up a goal in the final two and a half minutes, it you know, might be just a little bit of lack of focus. Obviously, you got an 11-goal lead, but you really want to get that shutout if you're a defenseman, if you're the goalie. Uh, you know, it's kind of an important thing to get your first shutout of the season. So, a little too bad we didn't get there two minutes away from it. Well, just over a minute and a half to go now as we're under 100 seconds left in this contest. A couple of physical hits down in that far corner in the UNCN. The puck will pop loose, and the Tar Heels get it out of the zone. Tracking back Frown, he'll circle behind his own net. Pressured by Carlson, forced up the far side, poked away by Jacobs, but he couldn't control it. And Duke clears it all the way down the ice. They will wave off icing, and play will continue with 1.05 to go. Oliveira behind his own net, sends it up the far board, stalled out as Duke knocks it back deep. Low slot, and it'll be controlled by Wheeland for the Tar Heels, and the defenseman will swing it off the glass, and it takes an off awkward carom off a of stanchion Stays in the zone for a moment, but UNC pokes it down the ice. And neutral zone, it'll be Regan. Lifted to the middle, and then sent deep as Joan race, Jones races in. 35 seconds left, Duke in control behind their own cage. Off the boards, down the far side. Along the wing goes Jung. He'll be knocked off the puck nicely by Graham, and UNC clears it back to the Duke blue line. 20 seconds left as Turkovich slaps one in. It'll be blockered down by Douthit. And a lazy clear gives Duke a chance here in the slot. Swept on goal, a loose puck and an open net. And the Blue Devils can't finish. Less than 10 seconds to go. Tar Heels looking to clear it out. This one gets back to the blue line. Sent back in by the Blue Devil defense. Now all the way out. And that will finish off this hockey game. A dominating performance in the rivalry for UNC. They got up 11-0, a late goal for Duke, broke the shutout, but a commanding win, John, and you know at least for the most part, a strong showing. Commanding win, I mean, we got to see strong performances from both of the centers especially uh, on a night when uh, UNC was forced to just roll two centers. So, you know, that's tough. Each guy's getting 30 minutes of ice time, uh, and they both really came through, producing with multiple goals each, setting up a lot of the offense through their use of speed. Definitely some things for Coach Volkman to work on in the upcoming week during practice, uh, especially once they come back from fall break, cleaning up some of the sloppy play that we saw in the second and third period with the unnecessary penalties, um, and really working maybe on a little more efficient breakout. Uh, we saw a little bit of uh, laziness in some of the forwards coming back you know, as the game went on and the, the lead was more in command, I would say. All right, well, John, thanks for joining me tonight. Really enjoyed it and looking Thank forward you for to having, having you on uh, later on in the season as well. Well, we're going to take a quick break here at the Orange County Sportsplex. When we come back, we will have a couple of interviews for you. Just to wrap up the broadcast here tonight, I will be joined on camera by Mason Regan and the assistant coach in Ben Sizemore. Well, we're just about done here in Hillsboro. We'll be back, but the final count, once again, is UNC 11, Duke 1. I'm Mason Regan. I'm a junior on the team this year. Uh, check out our new website, uchockey.com. We have our team schedule, roster, uh, and we have a team store set up too, and it's for a 501c company, so all donations are tax deductible. Come out and see us play sometime. The day's top trending topics, local weather, world news, and since we all enjoy a little recreation time, City Newsbeat streams human interest stories, entertainment news, science and space stories, food recipes, cocktail recipes, even horoscopes. Go to the search channel section and tap in Newsbeat on the keyboard, then open the app. Without any more work on your part, the local stories of the day begin to play. Try City Newsbeat. News and weather for the untethered.
We're back at the Orange County Sportsplex after an 11-1 victory for the UNC Tar Heels over the Duke Blue Devils. Chris Lehman now joined by Mason Regan of the Tar Heels. A goal and three assists today for you. What were you seeing that really helped you produce? Well, mostly we just got off with a lot of speed. You know, um, we crashed the net really well. That's how, we got, um, that's how we got a couple of our goals there. So we just really pressed them hard. Uh, and that's really what we're going for all season long, just kind of keep up the pressure, keep up the speed, work our guys, work them, work, just work them down. Well, one thing you guys have done well early on in the season is get out and get started early. You do that again tonight, five goals in the first period. How good is it to get out to an early lead against a rival like Duke? Well, that's always huge, you know. Um, we just want to make sure that we get out to a good start, like you said, and just, I mean, just keep it simple once we get up ahead. You know, just pass, shoot, score. We got to just work on the fundamentals a little bit, yeah. All right, well, one thing that happened once you guys got ahead is it seemed like you lost a little bit of focus. Uh, something that's been a bit of an issue for you guys is, is taking some penalties uh, on a little bit of a frequent rate early. What do you do to, to fix that? Well, I mean, especially myself, you know, you got to keep your composure. We got playing a little impulsive there, especially once we got uh, to that big lead. But mostly we just got to keep our heads out there, just play simple. Um, got to cut down on that because that's going to cost us against uh, tougher opponents. Well, you do get a chance to, to work on things like that as you guys do have a break coming up. I believe the next game not till the 27th of this month, so a little over a week off before you take on Elon again here at the Orange County Sportsplex. How do you stay ready to go with this little break? I mean, it's nice to get a little bit of a break in between games. Elon's a tough opponent. They always like to bang bodies, you know, skate hard. They bring a tough team with them. So it's going to be nice to get everybody with a deep breath. Everybody's through with exams at this point for the most part. That's always nice. Um, so hopefully we get everybody back fresh and keep up this hot start. All right, Mason, thanks for sticking with me here after the game, talking for a little bit. I'll let you get to the locker room and get home. I know it's late. All right, thanks. Appreciate it. All right, that's Mason Regan. We're going to step aside for just a moment. I'll have assistant coach Ben Sizemore with me right after the break. Chris Lehman back alongside now assistant coach Ben Sizemore after an 11-1 win for the UNC Tar Heels over the Duke Blue Devils. Uh, ben, we talked about it about a week and a half ago when you were on with me. Former player for this team. What's it like to be on the bench for the rivalry game? Oh, it's always fun. It's always nice to, to beat a rival. To, to get the W in, a, in, a, in any time is good. To get it against a rival is always fun. Well, I mean, you guys get a, a huge win tonight. 10-goal victory, 11-1. Very quick start but as a coach. Obviously, you've got to look for the ways to improve. What do you see out there from this team that needs to, to be fixed a little bit? Uh, we got to be more patient with the puck. We had, even tonight, we still scored 11 goals, but there were some times where guys were quick to get rid of the puck. A little bit more patience is what we need. We're, we're starting to execute our forecheck a little bit and getting in on not giving their defense a lot of time to make a play. So we like that tonight. But we, we like to see a little bit more patience with our passes and a little bit better, more tape-to-tape -tape stuff. So going well, forward. Well, as we mentioned with Mason, you guys do have some time to work on that. About 10, 11 days until your next game against Elon. We heard his, his player's perspective. From a coaching perspective, what are you looking at with that break to, to develop with this team? Oh, yeah, like you said, we got, we got some time. Guys, take a deep breath, get some rest. Uh, we've been working pretty hard in practice, too. So. Let their, let their bodies recover so we can uh, have a good, strong push here for the, uh, the end of the year. All right, Ben, thanks for taking some time to talk to me. A little bit late, we'll let you get home. All right, have a good one. All right, thanks, Ben. That's it for tonight here at the Orange County Sportsplex. A dominating win for the Tar Heels. Your final count, UNC 11, Duke 1.